you got to be ready for it. You have to expect, like I said, put in the time in, um, training them. You have to expect the financial part of it because just because you adopt a dog and you pay like a couple hundred dollars adoption fee, that's not it. Like, you have to pay for the food, the vet, this, that. Like, you got to be ready for that, you know, especially with French Bulldogs, they are very expensive. Welcome to Bully Girl Magazine. I'm Gigi, your host, and today I'm with a very special guest, Alex Beneforti. Welcome, Alex. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Good. Okay. It's great having you. We are super excited, and you're going to be talking about a very special topic, adopting and rehabbing. So you were telling me about Stella, your dog. Um, was Stella adopted? So Stella was not adopted. My other dog, Frankie, was adopted. I adopted him when he was 11 months old, privately. So he was kind of my first experience with adoption, um, which it, it was, you know, I like I've said, it, it was the most rewarding experience because I was able to get him to be the best version of himself. But with it comes a lot. You need to be prepared for that. You know, um, he had a lot of anxiety, food aggression, um, socialization issues um so it was a lot for me to get him to a good place it took a lot of time but it was rewarding i mean he turned out to be fantastic in the long run so i personally loved the whole adoption phase is it a lot yes but it is worth it um i think you just need to be really prepared for it and if you know the type of breed that you're adopting i think that's very helpful too i was lucky he was a french bulldog So he wasn't a mixed breed dog. So I was able to do a lot of research and figure out like, you know, all about their tendencies, their likes, their dislikes. Um, and I think doing the research was so helpful um, mm -hmm. with me rehabbing and kind of training him and getting him a little leveled out after I had, had adopted him. So that was kind of my experience with adoption with Frankie. Stella wasn't adopted. Um, we got her from a breeder. She was older. so. And in a way, we kind of saved Stella, too, because she was older and she wasn't purchased yet. She's kind of just hanging around. Um, but the dynamic between both of my dogs, it was actually the best thing to get Frankie a friend. Considering he wasn't the most social dog, even after all the rehabbing, they <laughs> end up being the best of friends. It was so sweet. And it was honestly, like, delightful to watch the two of them be together. So that was That's kind beautiful. of my experience with that. That's beautiful and congratulations. And also, well, we're very sorry uh, for your loss. Um, mm -hmm. You were both very happy to be, to, very lucky to be together. Um, yeah. So how was that first journey, like the, the decision-making? How, how did Frankie come to you? How did that happen? So he was brought to me and it was, You know, with Frankie, he came from a home where they had a lot of dogs. So he just, like, didn't fit into the pack. It really was that. Because he couldn't fit into the pack, you know, he had trouble eating. He had trouble following directions. He would get, you know, a little aggressive at times. And he was just a puppy. So when I got Frankie, he was 11 months old. So they had brought him to my house. And they're like, listen, you know, this dog needs a home. And I was kind of in a place where I wanted a dog at that point. And I just remember seeing him. And he was, like, so skinny. I'm so sad. He just like didn't mm -hmm. even look like a French bulldog. And I remember just holding him and it was like, I just knew like he was supposed to be with me. And there's these funny little things that kind of happened along the way. Like we had the same birthday, I found out. So I celebrate my birthday every year with my dog. Um, <laughs> but it really was that instant connection. It's like, I knew I had to take him and I had to like help him. And I did. And it was the most like beautiful journey. He actually trusted me pretty quickly, which was good considering he had such bad anxiety issues. But the, the work I had to put into Frankie really had a lot to do with like other people, other dogs being in a situation that was just too much for him. Like he would get triggered. So like I never brought him to dog parks right away. And if I took him out in public for like a walk, I actually had like a tag on him. Like do not pet because he didn't like it. You know, so I thought it was important to not put him in a situation where something could possibly harm him or someone else because I didn't know him well enough until later on. You know, you don't know 
fully their circumstances. You know, some dogs come from really bad circumstances. Frankie didn't come from a very bad circumstances, but he had issues that needed to be corrected before mm-hmm. I could put him in a situation like where he could be pet by a stranger and be okay with it or play with other dogs and not like at all, you know, tensed up and, you know, acting crazy and what have you. So <laughs> that was kind of my conscious effort in the beginning. And it was a lot of that. It was a lot of structure building and getting him kind of like acclimated to like society, a routine, you know, showing him the way. So that's, that's pretty much like how our journey started, Frankie and I. That's beautiful. So listen, yeah. when's your birthday? December 14th. So you were both Sagittarius? Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. Lots and lots of energy in that home. <laughs> yeah. So he definitely matched my personality after a little bit. I'm like, oh, your birthday really is the same as mine. <laughs> <laughs> I love so, that. Yeah. Um, and the second question, um, did you have to ask for any help for the triggers um like did you know what to do like did you um move step by step with him like observing him how was that I definitely did a lot of observation um it was like a trial and error thing like you had to kind of see what set him off and then work on it um I definitely spoke to the vet a lot because You know, he had to be vetted so early with his issues, especially like the allergies and the anxiety. So they gave me some pointers with the anxiety. But I mean, treating the anxiety is something that just comes over time. Um, you have to really learn and figure out like what's setting the dog off and how to not mm. put them in a situation like that. So I think it's one of those things like his anxiety was always like something that we struggled with, honestly, till the end of his life. I mean, did it get better? Yes, 100% from the beginning to the end. And total difference. Um, but that's also, it goes back to adopting, like you don't know what you're going to get and they come from all walks of life. So some dogs are from very bad circumstances and it's a little harder. Some are puppies. So it's easier. You know, I had a puppy, but he was a little older. So he already kind of experienced life a little bit. And, you know, I kind of had to deal with like whatever he experienced and fixing it, but training him actually was very good. It was very positive, like get him housebroken, get him on a leash, um, get him on like a routine and a structure. It came very like fluidly, which was nice considering he had kind of all these like problems going on. So training him was great. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's like, it just takes time. That's the best way to think of it. You need time, you need patience, yeah. you need love. That's, that's the key to adapting the yeah. dog and like getting them to like kind of fit your life and you fit their life. And, you know, yeah. I think that's the best way to describe it. Yes. I love that. So, and it's a process. It's like a healing process. So yeah, yes. time is everything. Yeah. So what are some common misconceptions people have about adopting puppies, especially those that need rehabilitation? I think the amount of work, that goes into it. It's like, you know, sometimes you think you're just getting like this clean slate with a dog and you're not. And you really have to be like prepared for like the whole picture. You know, you have to be prepared to like build a bond with the dog, build trust, teach them, guide them. Uh, the thing is like the worst case scenario is you adopt a dog and then it doesn't work out. And then the dog goes back and then it has to be readopted. That like kills me when that happens. So You know, you have to be like really in it and you do need time. Like I think timing is everything. You know, when I got both of my dogs, I had the time. So it was perfect. You know, when I got Frankie, I had a little bit of time where I could get home early and I could be there for him and I could have someone walk him and what have you. When we got Stella, it was during the pandemic. So we were home a little bit more. So I was able to train her and be a little more involved. So I think timing is everything. I don't think you should ever get a dog when you don't have time. Like if your life is completely overwhelmed, probably not a good idea to adopt a dog, you know, but I think the best thing is get a dog when you have time and when you're willing and able to give them a lot of patience and love and training and, and truly like be there for them because building that bond with that dog is crucial, especially in the beginning. It sets like the tone for how your life's going to go with your dog. So that's like kind of my advice. I think just the misconception is that it could be easy You don't know, you know, it's definitely easier with a puppy 
that's just a, a fresh little litter, you know, and they, they haven't learned anything about life. I think once the dog gets a little bit older and older, you have to expect some behavioral issues, anxiety, um, vet bills. You have to be ready for that. That's my, that's my perception of like what the misconceptions could be with adopting a dog. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. People think like, oh, okay, I'm going to just like, oh, puppy, they're so cute. And they are not like a toy or something yeah. to decorate your home. So um, could you walk us through the process of rehabbing a puppy? Um, like the steps that you will tell someone that is considering doing it? Yeah. So the steps with like, like rehabbing um, Frankie was about consistency. So when I got him, he wasn't house trained. So that's kind of the first thing I worked on was getting him house trained, training him on a wee-wee pad. Once you figured that out, then we went outside and then it just all kind of rolled into one. That was step one. The food aggression was step two. He would just, I mean, even get aggressive with me when I put his bowl down because he had issues eating with other dogs, you know, which is understandable when you have multiple dogs, like it's, it's, it could happen. So getting him to eat, getting him to eat where he had, like slowed down. because he was like eating, like he never ate like in his life. So that took the most time was getting him to eat normal, getting him to know it's okay. Getting him to know like the dog bowl and the water, that's his spot. That's his area. No one's going to like interfere. And then the training, So those were kind of the steps I followed. Um, the training was consistent every day. General commands, um, getting him a little bit out into society and socialization. I did do a class with him, like, so that he could be around other dogs. So when we walk, like, he wouldn't just, like, lose it and he would be fine, which he was. He, he adapted pretty quickly. Um, and then the anxiety, just watching it, seeing, you know, like, I noticed, like, if you touched him on a certain spot on his back, he would freak out. So we didn't do that. And then over time, once I built trust with him, we were able to touch Frankie anywhere. We could grab his paw and hold it and rub it and he was okay. So that took the most time too. So I want to say that and getting his eating corrected were crucial, but it's like step by step. Like I took it easy, you know, like I definitely tried to build some type of routine with him like a baby. Seriously. Like we eat mm -hmm. at this time, we sleep at this time. Like We take a walk at this time. I come home at this time. Like they get it. It just takes a little bit of time. So there's patience that has to go with that. Some dogs, depending on the breed, they'll just like get with it right away. Some won't. He was like in the middle. It was like moderate with him, you know, considering mm -hmm. his circumstance. He was pretty receptive. It just took a little bit of time with him, but he ended up being great. It was wonderful in the end. So, you know, I, I was like it. always just so proud of him. I really was. I don't know how else yeah. to put it. Like everything was like, it was like a victory. I'm like, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> so yes, you know, I and just, you it's just like the first year is like a blur. It really is like having a baby, like it's a blur. And then everything kind of falls into place and he fell into place. He ended up being the best version of himself with all the like time and love that I put into rehabbing him and getting him kind of like in a good place, you know? I love this story. And Yes, you were telling yeah. me this, like, he was reactive to places you touched him and yeah. that he could relax and enjoy being petted, you know. Um, that's beautiful. Like, I'm really happy that, that you put yeah. all this effort. Needed, like, to, like, accept love and just be loved. And that that's, was, like, the biggest bond I had to build with him. But, like I said, we had an instant connection because Frankie was, like, my boy. He was great, so... <laughs> Like, I'm I so happy that. I could smile now because I've had such a rough, like, couple months. I'm finally, like, at a point where I can, like, kind of talk about him without, like, completely crying. Because, <laughs> was, you know, you just have, like, that dog. He was that dog. He was, he was just the best, you know? Yes. And it was very sad to see him go, but it's also nice to, like, talk about him because his story's a little unique and our story is unique, you know? Like how we ended up together and what a beautiful life he ended up having. And honestly, I had a beautiful life because of him. So yes, I feel really lucky to have experienced the whole thing with him. I really do. You are, you yeah. are, you both are, and it's beautiful, really beautiful. I'm, this is so sweet. Um, so what would you, what advice would you give someone that is considering of adopting and rehabbing? So what would Thank you, you say? 
I think, you know, just be ready and do your research. If you know the breed, that's always a positive. That's not always the case. You know, a lot of dogs that are adopted are mixed breeds. So you kind of have to like figure that out afterwards. Um, they do tend to know a little bit like they're, they're, they're mixed, you know, and I think, you know, I think all dogs like have hope. It's just about like really putting the effort in, you know, um, whether it's a French bulldog or a pit bull or whatever the case is, you know, every dog should have a chance, you know, but you have to be like, you got to be ready for it. You have to expect, like I said, put in the time in, um, training them. You have to expect the financial part of it because just cause you adopt a dog and you pay like a couple hundred dollars adoption fee, that's not it. Like you have to pay for the food, the vet, this, that, like you got to be ready for that. You know, especially with French bulldogs, they are, very expensive. I know I have, I've had, I had Frankie and I had two at one point. Now I have Stella and you have to keep their health in check. They're very delicate. They are susceptible to all sorts of allergies. They could get IBDD, which is a spinal injury, which is super common in them. Um, they get a lot of like weird skin allergies too. So like sometimes you need to get them cytopoint shots. I have to do it for Stella. I had to do it for Frankie. There's something in my grass that would just set them off. You know, it's like these little things, they just happen and you have to really be prepared. So I'd say like, be prepared, you know, for all of it. It's such a big responsibility. Uh, you need to be like, have the time, have the patience and financially be able to take care of the dog and give it a loving home. You know, I think those, those are the most important things when it comes to wanting to adopt and rehab a dog. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I totally agree with you. And, you know, With all this comes also the good part, you know, a lot of responsibility. But what would you say were the most beautiful aspects of adopting a French bulldog or a puppy? I think the most beautiful aspect is when they really, like, start to trust you and love you and they just become part of your life. You know, I think Frankie was, he had just such a hard time trusting people that I became like everything to him. My husband too, but I was a little more his person and I could say that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I think you just have like, it's such a selfless act to adopt a dog and take care of them. But I think the ultimate reward is the love that they give you. You know, it's like the biggest thank you you could get for saving them and giving them a beautiful life. And I just felt like every single day was like a blessing with him. He was my shadow. He was everywhere with me. I could walk outside and he would just stay right next to me. He was my dude. So I had this incredible like experience with him. And I think it just made me so happy, like how much progress he made and how much love he was able to give and how funny he became. Like he really came out of his shell, like probably the last like four years of his life, I want to say, because the first two years were just about fixing things, but He was awesome. And that's the best part is when you know that you did good by them and their, their personality shines like, you know, so that's mm -hmm. me is the most rewarding thing. Just making sure that oh, they end yeah. up happy and loved and, and good, you know? Yeah. I love that about the personality because it's so clear. Like they're all so different and they have yeah. like their favorite things. And I love that. Yeah. Like Frankie and Stella's per personalities are like polar opposites. But they got along and they loved each other. But they're such different dogs. And that's the thing, too. Like, they're all so different. You just don't really mm -hmm. know what you're going to get. You know, like, you're like, okay, I have a French bulldog. I'm going to get another one. Stella and Frankie have nothing in common with their personalities and how they were and how they trained them. And it's not even that they came from different walks of life. They're legitimately different personalities. She's very hyper, very energetic. Like, for a French bulldog, she has... An immense amount of energy she runs laps like she's a little more fit whereas frankie would just lay on the like back stoop in the sun and just be a typical lazy happy french bulldog so they were very different from each other and like i had to relearn things even getting her you know like i couldn't do the steps that i did with frankie because stella was totally different like i tried to crate train her she would eat through the crate if she could <laughs> You know, like just a totally different experience. So I, I don't know that that's kind of like my whole thing with them too. Like, you know, you, even if you start to get more than one dog or another dog, like you may not be able to use the same like method of training and rehabbing every time, 
you know, they're different. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. kind of have to kind of take a day, one day at a time and figure it out, you know, there's no right yeah. or wrong way to approach it, you know? Um, so that's just a little, little bit on the two of them. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't imagine Stella eating through the crate. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. I, I, and at I, the same I time. All the time. Stella was harder than my newborn baby sometimes. Like I did not sleep for like three months with her as a puppy because she wanted to like be, the, you know, she wanted to be in the bed already with us and Frankie. So she's in the crate. She's like gnawing out of it. I'm like, oh my God. So <laughs> she was just different, but she did do things quicker because she wanted to, like she wanted to not sleep in the crate. She wanted to go outside. Like she was just ready. And I'm like, I'm not ready though. I'm not ready. You're like, and she was so tiny when I got her that. I was like, you can't just like run out. <laughs> so it was, it was, a, it was such a different experience. She's great though. Like now she's totally trained. Like she's wonderful, but she was like very, she was a very funny French bulldog to train and a little different. It's from a different lens with her. Like I said, I didn't particularly adopt her. Um, so they just were so different from each other, but I enjoyed like both versions of the experience with both my dogs. I really did. Yeah. I love that. I love that. So what role do you believe education plays in promoting responsible puppy adoption and ownership? It comes back to like what we touched on before, just doing your research, understanding, being ready for the expense that comes with it. You know, not everyone could train a dog. Sometimes you need a trainer. It's expensive. Vetting them is expensive. So I think like with that, I mean, anyone could be responsible. You know, I want to believe that if you're willing to adopt a dog, you're willing to take on responsibility for them to a degree. Um, but you have to have the patience. You have to really be ready for that experience. And I think having like, you know, your research, your education on the breed and kind of knowing like the steps of training, I think that all creates like a good environment for the dog will send on. And then the love, the love is key. If you love your dog, it will just, it will love you back 10 times over. Like that's what they, that's what they need. You know, they just need yeah. a lot of love, a lot of guidance. So I think that like is the most, you know, important thing, you know, to be responsible. Mm -hmm. Like you have to be in a situation where you're able. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. And also they need the love and they do give it back. So that's beautiful. Yeah. Um, you will get it back. <laughs> so are there any current initiatives or projects you're particularly excited about in the realm of puppy adoption and rehab? Well, right now I'm not doing much because I have Stella and I just lost Frankie. And I think I need like time to kind of get over Frankie a little. I'll never get over Frankie, but just I need the time <laughs> to like get myself in a place where I'm ready to get another puppy, which I do want another puppy. But I also know like I can't replace him. He's, he's truly irreplaceable, but I, mm -hmm. I would definitely do it again because I, I just loved it. I love like caring and like nurturing and like creating like a safe place for my dogs. And I just, I love like how they progress with all like, you know, the efforts that you put in. So I'm not doing anything now, but I think if I did get another dog, I would definitely adopt another French bulldog or some kind of like bulldog breed because I, I have experience with them now and I just feel comfortable. Like I kind of know how they are. You know, I had boxers mm -hmm. before, which are awesome. They're a great breed of dog, by the way. Um, mm -hmm. But I do like, I don't know. I love, I love my little French bulldogs. They're awesome. They're very funny. It's impossible to be upset with a French bulldog because they're so cute. It's <laughs> yes. just like, you're like, it's okay. You ate my crown molding. I love you. Come here. And that actually happened. Like you can't be mad at them. They're so cute. Oh my. They're, they're funny and they're goofy and they just love their humans. So I would definitely get another one. I just don't know when, to be honest, mm -hmm. because it's been nine months since he passed away. And, it, you know, he was so sick the way it like went down that like, I need time to like be ready yeah. for that. You know, I wish I had yes. a project. So my project really is just Stella. I have my girl like, you know, and I'm still teaching her things. You know, she's great, but she's still you know, she gets herself into a little trouble sometimes. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, the guidance never ends. You're always teaching them new things and it's good. I love what you're saying about, I do not have kids, but I do have 
nieces and when you say about you cannot get mad with their faces and for me when i'm with my with my daughter-in-law with whatever she says i'm like oh my she's so cute and her mom is like <laughs> trying to nap her and i just would say, oh she, she's so cute and i totally get it i just saw stella five, uh, five minutes ago and she's so cute how she's can you get mad at that oh it's my and those girl. And Those she's eyes. definitely a little more mischievous than Frankie was. She's very daring. It's impossible. She's adorable. I'm just like, okay. You know, she destroyed our sofa. We just had it reupholstered. I'm like, okay. She's like, <laughs> she's something else, but she's good. She's so kind and so sweet that you're just like, it's all right. Whatever she, whatever she does, we'll, we'll deal with it. But yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, how could our listeners, how could the people that are watching support uh, puppy adoption and rehabilitation? What do you think? Um, I think an easier way, like if you know you want to adopt like a specific dog, like there are so many French bulldog rescues. You know, you could go on Facebook. Like I know um, there's a um, one that I followed for a long time. It's called um, S-N-A-F-U. It's like short nose, um, something or other, like a nay take in so many French bulldogs, they foster them, they raise money to get them vetted, and you know their backstory, which is super helpful. So you already kind of get a little insight on like, if there's any issues, if they could be homed with, um, you know, a house that has children or multiple dogs or not. Like, I think looking into these like private rescues is very resourceful. Um, because they have a little more of a backstory because those dogs tend to have been surrendered. So they kind of know like what happened and it's just a, you know, and then you're really like, okay, this is what it entails. And, um, so I really like recommend that, you know, I would look into like, well, you know, rescue groups and there are, you know, shelters too, that are technically rescue groups. There are a ton of them in New York city and they have a little bit more of a backstory, on the dog. And I think getting a backstory is helpful. I had a little bit of a backstory, so it definitely helped me. Um, when you go into it blindly, you know, you're going to kind of just figure things out as it goes. And that's a little hard. Um, so that's my like recommendation. Just look around, you know, like you'll find things online. Social media has so many things, you know, like bully girl magazine has like so much information on breeders. So if you don't want to do the adoption route and you want like a reputable breeder, there's a little hesitation. Like you're always a little nervous, like finding a breeder for a specific dog. So it's all about research. Like do you research, look into things, make sure it's like legit and like, you know, try and get feedback and reviews. Like I'm all about that. I think you should really look into things like well-rounded before making a decision. Mm -hmm. So that's my, like, that's my advice. If you're really like looking to adopt a specific dog or just a dog in general, you know, yeah. get feedback that's look into everything. I think it's helpful, you know? Yeah, that's great advice. Do your research and yeah. know what you're getting into and be responsible. That's great yeah. advice. Um, so you mentioned Bully Girl Magazine. Uh, yeah. What do you think about Bully Girl Magazine? Bully Girl Magazine, I think it's cool because it's just a source of resource, literally, you know? Um, it focuses so much on like the different bully breeds. Um, I like its focus on pit bulls because I feel like they need a lot of awareness. You know, um, I like that, you know, they, they spread the word on like supplements and you get people's backstories. You see pictures of people with their dogs and it's just nice. If you're a big dog enthusiast, it's a perfect magazine and app for you to like follow along with. Um, I've known about it for a long time. So, um, I can't like, you know, I can't thank you guys enough for having me on today. It was really special to me to like kind of share my story about my dog who meant the world to me, you know, um, it's almost like a little tribute to my Frankie. So thank you. I appreciate Please. it. Please. You know, thank and I you. Highly thank you for sharing. Looking into your magazine because it's, like I said, it's got a lot of resources that could be helpful for everyone. Yeah. Yes, it does. So thank you for joining us and sharing your story with Frankie. It's really inspiring. We thank can you. hear Stella around there, like yeah. being mischievous. <laughs> She's barking at something. <laughs> okay. So thank you so much. Is there anything else you would like to say before we wrap up? I think we're good. I think we touched on everything. So I hope you guys are like happy with, you know, everything I gave we you. Are. 
to go on. Yeah, you were great. You're great Thanks. on camera. I've thank you so much. It, so thank you. <laughs> no, but you're really great. You're you you're really great. So thank you so much, Alex, for joining. This was so interesting and so important. We are super happy to spread awareness. And thank you for sharing your story and Frankie's stories with us. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me and allowing me to share, you know, a little insight on my experience and talk a little bit about my dog. It was, it meant a lot to me. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. And thanks everyone for watching. Thanks for joining. Don't forget to follow Bully Girl Mag on Instagram and visit BGM Warehouse to get some awesome Bully Breed apparel. Don't forget to purchase the latest issue of Bully Girl Magazine. Like and subscribe. See you next time. Bye, Alex. Bye, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.